Welcome to the fun bit of the tutorial. Certainly more fun uh, than the first part where we just did some basic blocky shapes. In this part, we are gonna be making the couch cushion. And by that, I mean the backing, right? The bit that you rest your back against or the seat. It's the same method for the seat. It's essentially making really the hardest part of a couch. It's the biggest, uh, most challenging part when you see a lot of 3D models online of couches, generally things fall apart here, right? It getting getting the wrinkles to actually look right. And this is, uh, you know, it's understandable that uh, if, you, if you didn't have uh, simulation tools or anything like that, if you were trying to sculpt this by hand, which some sculptors can do well, um, it's just really, really hard to do that, to sculpt in the, the wrinkles accurately. Um, and so that's not the method we're gonna do, thankfully. Um, we are gonna be using uh, two tools in Blender. The first, a cloth, cloth simulation to create the basic shape of the cushion. Um, and then the second part using the new cloth brushes, which is gonna add some slight variations to things. Um, so I'll show you that, that two-step method. And that's something that it took me like, far too long to figure out. I've probably made about 50 to 100 of these cushions to prepare for this tutorial, trying all different methods from multi-resolution to pure sculpting, to pure simulation, to weight painting, so much mess. Um, and I've figured that this is the best method, the one that I'm gonna show you. So to start with, we need uh, the basic shape for the cushion, right? So it's this square shape here. So I'm gonna add in a cube, scale this down, position this roughly there. If you can hear my baby in the background, I apologize. But now you got a little taste of my life and what I have to put up with on the day to day. Something like really irritating about when a baby just goes, eh, 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 eh. It's just like, spit it out, man. You got something to say, say it. Don't just you know, anyways, but you can't say that because then people think you're a, a crazy person. But every parent thinks it. So anyways, so I've got this, uh, I've just scaled in the cube. Now you'll notice that I've made this far thinner than the reference appears, right? So the reference has, you know, an inflated looking cushion. Uh, and the reason I've done that is that uh, we are gonna be using the cloth simulator with inflation. So this is going to expand beyond what it is. So actually this size that you've got here, you really want that to be, um, if I can find it, maybe this is a better picture. Trouble is, is it's all like zoomed out then. Yeah, look how tiny that thing is. Let me get in here. Aha, uh, can you see it? But kind of like where the seams actually are. Like that's where the initial size of the cushion was. And then it's sort of like inflated beyond that. So it's actually really thin and then the inflation, you know, expands it out. <clears throat> okay, so. The cloth simulator, which is what we're gonna use, um, sculpting is the same, everything is based off the geometry that you have. So currently we've got uh, exactly eight vertices that's making up this uh, this shape here. So we would not get anything good out of this. Uh, so obviously you need to subdivide it, right? Now, if you were to subdivide this in its current state, um, and I'll show you this, but just don't follow what I'm doing right now. Um, if we were to just like increase this and create uh, detail, you can see we now have more detail. We have more faces across this mesh. However, the detail is not uniform, right? It's, it's performed the same number of subdivisions across here as it has here. Now, this is a problem whenever you're sculpting, whenever you're doing simulations specifically, because now you have more detail like horizontally on one axis than you do in another. And that is a huge problem and I see that a lot. I've seen several tutorials actually on YouTube um, where they start with a mesh that, that's actually like this and it's just setting it up for failure because you'll have detail in an area, uh, more in one area and the simulation won't work right. It'll try and like treat it, I, I don't know, like more weight for this part and it just looks horrible. So the, the first thing you need to do before you do um, any cloth sim, anything like that, is you want to get square, uniform faces across the entire mesh. So what I mean by that is, um, I, I find like the shortest face, shortest face like this, and then I do a loop cut. So control R and then scroll up on the mouse wheel until looking at this and just sort of judging by your eye what looks like I'm getting uh, faces. So that looks like 14 cuts. And now I'll right click to confirm it in its place. And those now look like faces across there. You can adjust this here 
if you wanted to after the fact, but uh, but that looks pretty good. And now, obviously I need to do the same thing going this way, uh, vertically. So control R, scroll up and how does that look? I think that's actually pretty good. Let me test that, 11 is too much. Yeah, that's good. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be perfect. So uh, that's good. We now have square faces, basically square faces across it, nice and uniform, and that's good. So now we can get to the, the cloth simulation phase. Now we are gonna be using a subsurf modifier. So, uh, so add one in like this. Um, and when you add a subsurf modifier, you can see that it smooths out the corners. We don't actually want that. We want there to be, uh, we want these edges to be sharp. So what you need to do is enable simple instead of Catmull Clark, which means when you change this, you won't see anything happen here. But when we add the simulation, uh, it will actually change it. So um, let's just set this to two and two, uh, simple. And then go to your simulation panel. Is that the simulation? It's physics, physics properties, and then click on cloth, right? Now it might've disappeared because I'm on a different frame. If that's the case, just hit shift left arrow and it'll go back to frame number one. Um, now you've got a whole bunch of settings here, but I just wanna point out first, the subsurf modifier is above the cloth simulation. That's important because you want it to add the detail and then simulate on top of that. We don't wanna apply it, we don't have to apply it. Um, we want to be able to come in here and play with these values if we need to, based on what we're seeing in this simulation. So it's actually really good. It's non-destructive, uh, which is a complicated term, but it just means you can change things after the fact. Anyways, so we got the cloth sim, and if we were to hit spacebar to play the animation, this is what we would see. It's falling, and it's clipping through everything, and that's fine and dandy. Um, nothing is happening because there's nothing for it to collide into or anything like that. Um, the big value that we want to give it is underneath, is this cloth, physical properties? Here we go, pressure, okay. Pressure is what is going to inflate our cushion, and this is really where like, 90% of the look comes from. The other 10% is really like the size of these faces. Everything else here is pretty much irrelevant. Tension, shear, bending. Bending actually has some effect. I might tweak that in a little bit, but all these other values, like the default, like I I've tried playing with everything and it just like, it made no difference for this, what we are doing here. Um, it's almost all controlled by pressure. So what pressure does is you check the box and then you assign a value. Let's just start with something big. Uh, let's go 10. And what you'll see is that it has started to inflate the object. Now the way pressure actually works is it's according to each face, right? So we've got faces, it's a closed mesh. So it is evenly like forcing the faces outwards. It's not actually inflating the volume, which is what you'd think. Um, and you could actually see that because if you were to delete, um, let's say one side of your cube, obviously don't do this, but I'm just using it to show you. Um, and then you were to like ramp this up. Um, you would see that it starts to fly in one direction, or at least it, now it's starting to go in one direction, right? So pressure is, is it's, it's a weird sort of concept. It's not actually inflating it like you would imagine something inflating in the real world. It just appears as if it is when you've got a closed mesh. It's pulling each of the sides in equal sorts of directions. So it looks like it's inflating, even though it actually isn't. So I don't know if that's relevant. You, depending on how deep you go into this, it might be, but anyways. So, uh, so it, we got pressure, but it is falling now. I was against initially like t changing these values because I find like a lot of problems, like people do like simulation tutorials and they just disable the gravity. Like they treat it like gravity is not important. Like the real world doesn't have gravity. Like a cushion has gravity. So why wouldn't you want gravity on your mesh? The problem is, is that this is so hard to control pressure with a falling thing that's colliding into something else. It starts, it just becomes like jelly and you can't control it. Um, things start to like pull out and it's just, and then you end up like doing weight painting, trying to control which parts have more pressure than others. It was a nightmare. And then I realized like, I just, you just gotta, you just gotta kill it. Kill the gravity um, and this is what we're gonna do. So when you get that, now you just have the pressure, that's it. It's just pressure and it's in space. There's a cushion in space and that's what we're getting, okay? Now you'll notice that it is heavily deformed and this is 
something that I've been banging my head against the wall for most of the last two weeks is that pressure is great. However, it very quickly deforms the original shape into something that you cannot really control. So essentially the reason this is happening is that this face on the front here is much bigger than these faces here. And so therefore this part is getting a lot more pressure um, than these top parts here. And now you can do weight painting and everything like that, but it's really overkill and it doesn't really solve the problem because then you end up with something that doesn't even have proper wrinkles and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, the solution that, uh, that I figured out is that uh, you really only need one frame to work, right? And towards the front in the first few frames, uh, it starts to look like the reference. All right, there we go. Loaded it into pure ref so I don't have to deal with the website. But it, you know, the reference is, you know, it, it's got a little bit of uh, of push to it. You know, it's, it's a little bit, what's the shape? Not a bean, bean bag. It's a little bit stuffy, <laughs> but but the the actual shape itself of the you know rectangular sort of soft edged thing, it, it's retaining that, but it has uh, some wrinkles down there. So really, we just need to find a frame at the front here that works. Um, and currently, it looks okay, but there's not nearly enough wrinkles. So the the detail of your cushion is really determined by, I mean, there's a few values in here that that um, really the biggest one is bending that can have some sort of impact, but the biggest one of all is just how much geometry you actually have, right? So this is with this amount of geometry. And then when we increase this, by the way, it, it bases it off of the viewport amount, not the render amount, just for the, the cloth sim. Um, anyways, when you do this, you can see it takes a lot longer to simulate, but you get much more wrinkles. Um, and this is actually a interesting point. You would think then that like, if you just keep increasing that, that you would end up with a more and more realistic looking cloth simulator, right? But that's not necessarily true because along with increasing the detail, you're also kind of changing the real world size, right? Like when I simulate at this, this is too high for the size of this cushion and the amount of wrinkles that we'll get in this, if I can keep yabbering on whilst it generates, um, the amount of wrinkles that we'll get on this doesn't make sense for the size of this cushion. It would probably make sense for like, basically if you go too high on the subsurf, you can end up with a cushion that looks like it, the real world size would be like the size of a house or a building, right? Um, so yeah, there's gonna be more and more detail the larger something is because cloth can only have so many wrinkles logically depending on the size of it, if that makes sense, right? So too many wrinkles here. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's probably too many wrinkles for the size of this couch. So don't automatically think like, yeah, I'm just gonna let it simulate overnight and then I'll have a hyper real cushion. Like you don't need to, thankfully. Um, <laughs> you can just go for something moderate like this. Look at the amount of, of wrinkles that you get, compare it to your reference and go like, yeah, is that more or less than, than what I want? And this is, this is definitely fine. Okay. So, you know, we could pause it here. Like we could, you know, freeze it, say, this is the frame I want to use, but we can also tweak it a little bit more. So this pressure amount here, I realized pretty late actually just yesterday, um, that the uh, the amount of wrinkles that you get here is also determined by how fast it is expanding. Okay, so if you were to set this to 50, uh, what you would find, we do have to wait for it to, to sort of go, is that you end up with less wrinkles, right? So you can see that the, the, the def, de, like at this point, that's way too deformed for us to use it. And the amount of wrinkles we've get, we've gotten is really small, right? So you can see like, you know, this is maybe even this is probably the size of the, the cushion that we want in, in terms of deformation, but there's not, there's hardly any wrinkles appearing there. Whereas if you went for a lower amount, so five, um, one tenth of what it was just now, is it will fill it up slower and you can see it gives it time for wrinkles to appear. So then it like clicked to me. I'm like, aha, that's the key figure then is like to, if, if you want to control for the shape of this, as well as controlling how many wrinkles you get, you need to adjust this pressure amount to fill it up slower or faster, depending on if you want more wrinkles. So if you want uh, more wrinkles, then you would slow it down so that it would fill up slower right? You end up with more frames before it gets to the size that it needs to. And therefore you end up with more wrinkles. If you've got too many wrinkles, then you increase the pressure size. So you can see like now I've got like this big bend here and it sort of looks like it's a, like a loose sort of a cushion. So it's a, like a totally different effect. And yet 
it's all controlled by this, this pressure amount here, right? So that's what I mean. Like the pressure is really uh, like the biggest factor here in making a couch cushion. Um, again, we just need one frame for it to look right. So, you know, we thankfully it's at the start of the animation. So you don't have to wait forever for it to sort of come around to the right shape. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Now you could, if you wanted to, by the way, change your bending amount. So I'll just very quickly show you what that is. Depending on the couch you're doing, you might want to adjust this. If we set that to 20, so instead of yeah, basically 40 times its default, you'll see you get far less wrinkles and the wrinkles that you do get is bigger and chunkier. And as well as that, it also retains this edge, right? Um, and that's because, uh, yeah, it's bending less. So that 90 degree angle that it starts with, it's trying to retain that and keep it sharp. Um, now, if you do that though, um, it, sorry, if you want that, uh, you don't necessarily have to change this because along with this, you end up with less wrinkles, right? So it's more suited for something like leather. And it's like, maybe if I want fabric, but I do want there to be an edge. When we get to the cloth uh, sculpting stage next, uh, that using the cloth brush, I'll show you a way that we're gonna um, do some detail around the seams so you don't necessarily need that. Anyways, let's, uh, don't want this tutorial to be like hours long. So let's set that to 0.5. This is what I'm gonna go with. Let's see how this comes out. All right, that is pretty good. By the way, if you go shade smooth, it can kind of give you a little bit of a look at how it's gonna look. Um, yeah, with proper shading. Um, okay, so how big do you want it? How big do you want it? How puffy do you want it looking from the side? Okay, comparing it with the reference. Does that make sense for the type of couch that we're going for? And I think it does. I think that's that's fine. So uh, when you apply this, uh, you can't go back. Well, you can, if you've just done it, you can probably have enough undos to undo the operation. But if you were to get sculpting later on and then go, oh, actually I need to, it would be good if I could recalculate that cloth sim, it's gone. So what I like to do before I apply anything, don't worry about that. That's my watch, just interrupting tutorial. I duplicate it, shift D, um, and then I just move it to the side like so. And then this, I hit M and then move it to a new collection, which I called unapplied. And then it's moved it to its own collection. And then I just uncheck that box, right? So it's hidden. And if I need it, it's there. I can go back to it and recalculate it. Now that I've done that, I hit apply and then apply it again on the cloth sim. And that is it. We now have, okay, stop. <laughs> go back, control Z, control Z, because we've just done it. There is one more thing and I'm glad I noticed it. Before you apply it, Later on, we are gonna be UV unwrapping this guy because we want to apply a texture to it, right? Fabric texture. It is a lot easier to UV unwrap something when you have started with a base mesh like this than it is later on because it's then gonna try and figure out the shape of it and do all this weird stuff. It's a pain. So it's a good idea to UV unwrap it before you apply it. So, okay. Uh, we just need to add some UV seams in here. And thankfully this is a couch object where there is logically real seams in real life. So it's very easy to UV unwrap. Um, all we're gonna do is go select, select sharp edges, and that will select all the edges. Oh, and this is in edge select mode, by the way. So hit two. If you do it in vertice mode, that's wrong. You wanna go edge select mode, select sharp edges, then go control E and then click mark seam. And that is it. Then we go to the UV image editing uh, tab up here and then hit U unwrap. Okay, and if you see a little alert down there that says like, oh, something's non-uniform, that's because the scale of this uh, is not set to one. So make sure, I mean, it's it's the cause of half the problems you have in Blender is when the object has a scale that's not one, one, one. So hit control A, apply your scale, then hit U unwrap again and it should then correctly UV unwrap. Okay, now that we've done that, we can apply it, but of course we have to recalculate the simulation because we've just done some editing. I don't know how Blender decides it, but anyways, thankfully it doesn't take that long. Um, and that's pretty good. Good, so now we hit apply and apply, and now we have our object here. Ta-da! It's UV unwrapped, it's ready to go, and it looks uh, pretty good. Um, and if you wanna see it like, yeah, add another subsurf modifier after it and you'll like smooth out those shapes because that's what we're going to do when we render it anyway. Um, and you can see sort of sort of how it looks. It's not it's not too bad, right? It's got the right like smooth deformations. It's got wrinkles where there should logically be wrinkles and overall it looks pretty nice, but doesn't look that 
detailed and that's what the next part is for so in the next part we're going to be jumping into sculpt mode and use the new cloth brush thank you apple watch uh to add in extra detail move it around so a lot of fun go ahead click here and i will see you in that video